Hello and welcome to the Adventure Toolkit tutorial number 5. My name is Glenn Storm and I'm from Hot Iron Productions. Today we're talking about using prefabs. If you've worked in Unity before and have been using prefabs already, a lot of this will seem familiar. But the point is that you can also save prefabs of trigger systems and in so doing save yourself a lot of time. For those of you who haven't used prefabs, let's just go over this quickly. Under Assets in your Project Panel, you'll want a Prefabs folder. It could be under Art and have a special folder just for Art Prefabs, but for our purposes we're just going to create a folder here up at the top called Prefabs. And I'm going to create a Prefab out of these cube pieces that I've shaped to look like a floor and a wall. To do that, I'm simply going to drag them into the prefabs folder. That's a wall, and here's floor. What we've done now is we've created prefabs, which can then be used to, well, simply duplicate. So if I want to create more wall pieces, that's easy to drag into our scene and position. But more importantly, when we modify our prefabs and apply the modification, it will save to all of the prefabs that we put in our scene all at once. This can save you a lot of time. That's the power of prefabs. For now though, I just want to duplicate these and make a corridor out of that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a corridor out of our floor and wall pieces. I've also created a couple of extra game objects just to organize them all under one object called corridor. Great. Now what I'd like to do is create a trigger system that we can then save as a prefab as well. I'm going to go ahead and create a light. And I'm going to name this light. I'm also going to give it a red color. Because red is cool. And what I would like to do now is create a trigger system that will pulse or fade this light up and down, sort of like an alarm. There is a tool in the Adventure Toolkit called Light Fader. So I'll create a new object, and under the Action menu I'll find Light Fader. This can handle fade events, and it can handle multiple lights for each event. I just have two events. I want to fade it down and then up again. So that's two. I'll go ahead and label that down and up. Each event can handle multiple uh, light objects. I just have one object that I want to fade. So I'll go ahead and call it one. I'll throw in the reference to my light in both fade events. Now it has a target intensity, and the intensity I want to go to is probably something around 0.3, and then back up to one. Okay. So target intensity down is 0.3, and back up again is one. Okay. Want to do this over the course of one second both times. Great. Let's see how that looks. Okay, it fades down, fades up again. Great. But that's it. That's all it's going to do. And what I want it to do is fade over and over again. In other, ways, in other words, I want it to loop. So to do that, I would like this to reset on complete. And then I'm going to need something to make it activate again. Because if we play this again, it will fade down, fade up again, and then it's going to turn off. You can see it deactivated at the end of it. That's resetting. But what I want it to do is loop. So I'm going to use a couple of extra objects to do that. I'm going to make a light manager out of our handy event manager tool. So under the adventure toolkit, event, event manager, I'm going to use one event and I'm going to activate this one object, the light fader. To activate or trigger that event, I'm going to create another object. And this is going to trigger the event, but in other words, it's going to reset the light fader. So I'll call it light reset. Under the event menu, I'm going to use event single to do this. For purposes of review, I'm going to populate the event manager field with our light manager. It's going to fire the first step in that light manager. 
and I want it to relay on activate. In other words, when this reset uh, tool is on, I want it to fire the event. I also need this thing to reset because it's going to loop over and over. And the last thing I need to do is actually turn this off because it shouldn't begin resetting until the light fader is done. Luckily, the light fader has an activate on complete field. So if I go to my light fader, it says activate on complete. This is an optional object to activate once it's done with all the events. So it's going to fade down, fade up, and then I would like it to activate light reset. Light reset should then fire the event, event zero on the light manager. The light manager will then activate light fader. And because both of them are set to reset on complete, both the light fader and the light reset tool, this should loop over and over again. Let's see if that works. And we see our light fading up and down. And we see our reset is resetting the light fader each time. Great. We have a continuously looping light fader. And we could get really tricky with the light fader. We could uh, change the interpolation so it's not just linear, but does something more complex. Maybe it fades up and down in such a way that it's just a little bit uh, slower from the intense part and quicker when it's less intense. Uh, we could even add some keys and make it kind of flicker, like a torchlight. Okay, this is good enough. And what I'd like to do now is save this as a prefab. I'm going to create an extra node, just like I did with the corridor and floor objects, and I'll call this light, sorry, flashing light. And what I'll do then is just group all these objects under the flashing light. And because that doesn't affect anything at all, we've basically made a handle for our flashing light. I'm going to go ahead and grab the whole thing and throw it in the prefabs folder. So now I've got a prefab of my flashing light and it's available for use anywhere in my corridor. And that's how we can save some time using prefabs with our trigger systems. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for the next one.